Oh, hey, my name is Mario. Welcome to the video. I'm going to show you how to do that reveal effect. And uh, before we jump in, uh, I've got a lot of other title animations and presets for you guys if you're interested in those. So if you get a call out title and just track it to whatever you want, and you can just rename it and call it anything that you want, right? So that's all in the store down in the description down below. You can find a link on my website. You can grab those and make your videos look pretty cool. But without further ado, that fish again. Without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. Okay, welcome to Premiere Pro. We're gonna do this in both Premiere Pro and After Effects, but this can also apply to pretty much any other editor that you have. Premiere Pro, After Effects, Final Cut, HitFilm, Sony Vegas, you know, so many different softwares out there that everyone uses. Now, obviously the workflow may be a little different, but the principles are the same. And just before we get started, a buddy of mine, Maxwell Ridgeway, he's a filmmaker and editor, a very similar channel to what I have. He did a tutorial on resizing shapes and text, so be sure to check that out. Here's a quick preview of that. What is up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another tutorial. Now in today's tutorial, we will learn how to auto scale shapes inside of After Effects via the text that you type out. It's really annoying to type out text and then have to rescale the shape manually to follow it. So we are gonna solve that problem today. So let's jump over to After Effects and make this happen. So a very interesting guy, very cool. Go ahead and check him out. He's down in the description, there's a link there and uh, show him some love. But all right, let's get onto the tutorial. And so I haven't even prepared for this, but we're gonna go ahead and do it. So first thing we're gonna do is obviously see where I'm walking and I'm gonna have my text in here. I'm just gonna press T on the keyboard and we'll just put in our text. All right, so once we have our text in here, I'm just gonna make it look a bit better. Just kind of make it more pleasing. Let's go with maybe the, the different font. Let's go to my favorites. I always like the Roboto and maybe we'll go with a medium okay so if i just increase the size a bit just to help accentuate the effect a little bit and i'm just going to center it as well and let's say i'm happy with that that's where i want it to appear so nice thing the text is there but obviously it's in front of me and it's there's no reveal so what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our background layer i'm going to drag it on the top obviously my text is no longer there so what i'm going to do next is let's just break down the opacity um let's take it down to maybe 30 just so we can see where the text is next thing with my top layer selected i'm going to grab my mask tool and i'm going to go right to where the text almost reveals from behind me because i'm going to use the side of my body to reveal the text so let's go let's say right over here and i'm going to zoom in about 150 percent and then i'm just going to use my hand tool with the h on keyboard and i can just move around and then I can go back to my mask tool with P on the keyboard. So if I just go down in frame here, this is where I'll start. So I'm going to draw a mask here just around the shape of my body whilst I do that reveal. And I'm just going to go along the shape. So that's going to be enough because the text is really only going to be this high at the absolute maximum and this low. So once I just finish off, so I'm just going to zoom back out, going to click fit. And I'm just going to drag it all the way out like this so that it covers the text completely. So if I bring the opacity all the way up again, you can see that the text has disappeared. It's behind this front layer here with the mask on it. So I'm just gonna zoom in again real quick. Let's go to 150%. Again, we're just gonna move over and I'm gonna take the feather down to maybe two or three. It just depends on what you want. Sometimes it might be a little different. I'm gonna stick with two and I can always change it later. Next, I'm going to keyframe the mask path right over here with the stopwatch. You can see it's keyframed over here if I just drag this out for a second. There's my keyframe. Now, one nice little trick you need to note is that when you're keyframing your mask, there's a very, very long process of doing it, and that's animating it every frame. So if I press the right key once, it goes one frame and I adjust the mask and so on. Now, that's a very inefficient and long way to do your masking. One other trick to do is go, let's say a few frames ahead of time, then we drag the mask over and we've obviously got to adjust it a little bit. So let's drag this over and you can see that it looks pretty decent. I'm just gonna adjust a little more just to make sure it looks good. Now in between these keyframes, you'll see that the mask kind of guesses where it needs to be as it goes. And because I'm going at a consistent pace, my speed isn't going fast, slow, fast, slow. Uh, the mask does a pretty good job of following me, but obviously it's not perfect. You can see my arm kind of 
gets in the way and obviously I don't want that to happen. I want it to be behind me completely. So in between I'm going to have to adjust the mask. So right over here I would say one, it looks like one frame in, it kind of gets lost a little bit. If I just zoom in a bit more, if I go to 200% here, you can see that the mask kind of got a little lost. That's because it's obviously not tracked and obviously the my speed isn't consistent throughout the whole thing. It is decent, but it's not 100% consistent. So I'm just going to make sure that's pretty accurate. Now remember, the most accurate you get, the better it's going to look. And remember, you can use the arrow keys to adjust it as well, just as long as it's selected. Then I'm just going to go one frame down. That looks good. Let's go to the next frame and you can clearly see that my arm's in the way. In fact, it's also in the way over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make another layer. But before that, I'm going to first finish masking around my body here. So let's just adjust this. I see that's off a little bit. Okay, so you can see my body has passed, but my hand hasn't. So what I'm going to do is just to make it more simple for myself and I don't have to add extra masks. I'm just going to duplicate the background one more time and I'm going to focus on my arm this time. So let's zoom out to 150%. We'll go back to, let's take the brightness down. I'm actually going to take it up on the first layer. I'm just going to open this layer a bit more so I can see. And I'm going to just drag this little separation between the audio and video just so I can see this. I'm going to take the opacity down just so I can see what's going on. So if I just drag out here to find out where the text is, it's gonna start right here. So I'm gonna again draw my mask. Let's zoom in a bit. And again, try and make it as accurate as you can. And yeah, more masking. You wanna know what's going on in my brain when I'm masking? All right, and then I'm gonna take the feather down to two again like I did last time. And then again, don't forget to keyframe or just toggle the animation on the mask path, mask, mask path here. <laughs> you can tell I've been doing too much masking. And again, we're going to go ahead and keyframe. So I'm going to go ahead a couple frames and adjust the mask. And you can tell that it's pretty crazy because there's so much going on here. My arm's swaying so I can rotate the mask. <laughs> if you want it good, you're going to have to put in the time. All right, and once the masking's done, I'm just going to take the opacity back to 100%. I'm just going to save it. Make sure you save it. And you can see here, if I go frame by frame, you'll see the text kind of reveal, and you'll see my hands in front of it as well. So very cool. If I just do a RAM preview here. So very cool. Now, obviously, you can see if I zoom in here, there might be a few things you'll notice about the text. Sometimes it might show up this kind of this wooden fence showing through from the background. That's because the text isn't 100% on my skin. So right here is actually a good example. So what you can do just to adjust that is just select your mask and just select it and use the arrow keys just to kind of hide that a little bit. So you can see now it's pretty much all gone. So kind of small little tweaks like that. Now over into After Effects, it's going to be very much similar, so I'm going to kind of rush through it because it's pretty much the same process. Alright, so After Effects, a beautiful spot to be in. Uh, I'm just going to use Control T to have my text in here. I'm just going to type out my text. Once I'm done with that, I'm just going to drag it into the position I want to be. Let's have it over here. What I'm going to do a little differently this time, though, is use the mask on the text rather than the background, just to show you that there are two options to do this. So with my text layer selected, I'm just going to press a G on the keyboard and let's go to the first spot where the text will be revealed or just before it. All right, and with my text layer selected, I'm just going to do my mask around my body just so that I can hide the text. And then I'm just gonna finish it up around there. Now what I'm gonna do is later on, I'm going to switch the mask. So if I just press M on my keyboard, I can make it do subtract and it'll hide the text and anything outside of the mask, it'll reveal. I'll show you that in just a minute. Right now, I'll just do none so it does nothing. And I'm just going to do my keyframes here. So just keyframe the mask path on the stopwatch here. And again, just some more roto, just like before. And actually, I'm just going to do subtract so I can see what I'm doing. And it'll also show me what the result that's going to happen here. 
And I'm just going to have the same mask go over my hands as well, just so that it makes things a little more simple. Okay, and you can see once I have the final masking result, it looks pretty decent once you reveal your text. So that's pretty much the whole tutorial. If you're interested in how I did the fish kind of jumping out of the floor or the grass, I have done a few tutorials in the past. I'll leave them in the top right in the cards. Those videos have been going pretty big, so I hope you enjoy those as well. But uh, yeah, I guess on to the outro. That's all there is to it. Pretty easy tutorial, very quick as well. It doesn't take a lot of work. But if you guys enjoyed, consider subscribing if you're new. Stick around for the future. I do a lot of visual effects, editing, filmmaking, and just generally making a fool of myself. Leave a like, would really help the channel out. Maybe grab some title animations down below, like call out titles and things like that on the website. But until next time, remember, keep smiling, keep shooting. That dog, what is going on with you?